We are about to forge a uh, Jörmungandr pendant, the Midgard serpent in Norse mythology. I made one, looks like this, and uh, we are forging it out of a iron bar that measures six by six. This uh, pendant involves a uh, couple of different forging techniques. It takes uh, uh, drawing out, of course. I say of course because that it's probably mo the most common technique used in blacksmithing. It takes some uh, splitting, punching and uh, bending. So uh, we will start here by forging the head. Like this, and uh, I started to round off uh, a bit uh, on the neck, so to speak, because I want the cross section of the serpent to be round. So, since I'm starting from a square bar, I'm folding that part around because it will be difficult to get afterwards when I forge the uh, the head. So what I'm going to do now is that I will forge the mouth of uh, the serpent. So I'm going to split. Like this. Oh. So we have our mouth cut up, and uh, this will be the upper lip and uh, the below. And uh, here I want, since I'm gonna bend this. Uh, smaller lip and I made a cut there is a chance of cracking here so to make sure it doesn't crack or to, to minimize the risk I will take a fuller and uh, forge this very inner corner making it round so it isn't a sharp edge because if we have sharp edges and then open it up it might it might crack so to eliminate that i will take a fuller Since these are thin material, I don't need much force, so it works well to just use yourself as, as an anvil, so to speak. Let's go one more time. And oops. and now we have a rounded corner there. Looks good. I might might want to do some filing <coughs> just to take out any sharp edges from the cutting.
When doing this, make sure that you don't use your best file. Because the workpiece is hot and it will ruin the file. But uh, if you have a couple of worn out files, you can use it for this. Uh, for this, or you simply cool down your workpiece. Now I'm gonna to do some more filing. You can see that uh, I got a sharp edge there. And uh, it looks good. So the next step is to draw out the uh, upper part of the mouth and uh, that will also become the loop that we will attach the necklace cord. We'll need to adjust this loop with the scrolling tongs uh, since, uh, yeah, it ended up a little bit. I don't want it like that, so I will do, do some small adjustments. Um, so I'm gonna straighten it out there a little bit and then I'm gonna make a larger radius on the yeah that looks good the next step is to punch the eyes And uh, placing it there. Like this. Dropped some coals there. Uh, so now I'm gonna draw out the body of the serpent.
and I have a... I want this to be... I want this to be 12 centimeters from the eye to the end of the tail. And uh, if you want to, you can cut it off. I used to cut it off at uh, 7.5 centimeters from the eye. And that, that makes a, a good, nice uh, taper for the body. But uh, now I'm choosing to have this attached to the bar a bit longer since uh, then I don't have to use the tongs. And uh, even though it is a bit slower, uh, I thought for uh, if it is the first time you forge it, it might be easier to just have it attached to the bar. So I am getting there, I need maybe one centimeter more, but I will start rounding it and uh, then we will see how much material we have there. Almost got that last centimeter from that, but I will need, I'm gonna cut it off right there. Let's see, find a tongue that will hold this. I think this will work. Yep, it will. Here I want an even taper, so uh, that will make it much easier when I'm gonna bend this into a circle, so it bends more uh, evenly. But I saw something that I wanted to remove here. It's a tiny cold shot when I cut it off. I got the like so. Alright, so now I'm gonna bend this as the story says. Jörmon Gandr is... Uh, he grew so large that he could encircle the whole Midgard. 
and still bite his tail. So I will turn this into a circle and um, make him bite bite his tail. And uh, I will need to, uh, since the neck here is a lot thicker than the rest of the hair, it will uh, be more difficult to bend it here. So I'm gonna focus on getting an even bend here and uh, preferably get it into the right radius from the start. So then I can first bend the neck and then the rest will go so much easier. So, uh, but sometimes even if I want the bend to be here, since it's thinner, it might be bending here instead. So uh, you need to pay at attention to uh, to that. I'm gonna use water to cool down the head so I can hammer on it, but uh, without deep warming. Like this, and I will go on the horn. I will, at the same time, while bending it, I will pull the tongue hand as well. And here we might see see that it's too much bent right here. I want the bend to be more closer to the head, so I will have to re redo that uh, one more time. Again, cooling it off. Now I think it should be... Yeah, I think this will be... Good, maybe a little bit... Ah, we'll heat it up. I want this slightly more bend. I wonder if uh, this bending fork might also do the trick. So I bend it a little bit extra and then I open it up. Like this. Now we can continue to... I will change the grip here and we'll bend, the, bend it from the other, other side. Now we shall simply make it an even circle so we meet at the mouth. Oh no, I was about to, to show you uh, at this stage, in order to get a even circle, I can see that we need to bend a little bit more 
here. And then we will need to open it up here. Because when we bend it here, the head will go down. But if we bend it more there, the tail will hopefully go right into its mouth there. So uh, we'll do that. What did I say? We shall bend a little bit more there. We might also want to open it up a little bit there. And we need to open it up there. And then we bend it some more. Now we need to bend it at the bottom here. Need to open it up. And then. So this uh, this is good practice for the eye to see to see where shall I bend more and in order to get an even circle and also to see that it is round. That is something I had difficulties with when I started, but with some practice it's getting better and better. And also, if I see that I need to bend it there that I also can do it. So that is also good practice for the hammer. Hammering. So uh, you could basically spend as much time here as you want. Uh, sometimes you just have to call it, call it good. And uh, I think I am, it is a little bit too, uh, it is not round, so I will have to uh, get the head down a little bit. Now I need to bend so the tail goes down, but where shall I... Where shall I... Might be a little bit there. We'll see. And then I shall open it up and then then bit more there. Now we're getting close. We are getting close. I it might be there. Gonna cool it off and so it's easier to and I of course want it to be laying straight. So I'm gonna flatten it out and that I do before I watch the symmetry because that might also when I flatten it it might uh, change the uh, symmetry a little bit so but uh, uh, I want the it shall be slightly more bent there yeah now oh, I'm happy like this and uh, yeah so this here we have our pendant i will uh, use a steel wire brush and uh, brush it clean clean from the scales and uh, then i will coat it with some uh, linseed oil and then show you a close-up